Hey guys, Joe here with Joe Martin in VC. Today we're going to take a look at how to plaster dip trims and emblem to get a nice, smooth, and consistent finish that can easily peel off when you're done and ready for it. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so today we're going to be plaster dipping the chrome Tesla bar, as well as the logo in black plaster dip. And for this, we're going to need isopropyl alcohol, black plaster dip, masking tape, tape and drape, a pair of scissors, and of course, a microfiber cloth. Starting off, we're going to have to remove any wax or anything that's on the surface still. So we're going to do that with our IPA, isopropyl alcohol, and we'll begin spraying the surface liberally, as well as the surrounding areas, since we'll be masking things off. Then we'll take our cloth and do a general wipe off, just removing the excess IPA. And then once we're done, we're going to flip over to the dry side of the cloth and work to get the remaining alcohol off. And we do have to make sure the surface is completely dry as if it's not, the tape that we're using definitely won't stick. And you'll want to focus namely on the edges and where any two pieces meet. Since this is mainly just rubbing alcohol, it'll dry in a couple of minutes time. So I'm going to let it sit for a couple of minutes to make sure it's completely dry. And then we'll come back and start to work on the masking off to get everything ready for plastic dipping. So we're going to start off by masking off the area with our blue masking tape. You can choose to be as detailed as you want with this step, as the more time you take, the less cleanup that you'll inevitably have. Fortunately, plastic does peel right off and easily cleans up, so if you do get any overspray or you choose not to mask, it isn't really that big of a deal. It just makes things notably easier and faster for you if you do choose to mask off. I'll be speeding up this section by 400% or four times, as the masking is definitely the longest part, it took me around 10 minutes to do all this and no one wants to watch that. I chose with the masking step to mask off as close as I could to the trim and emblem, making sure to press it under the Tesla bar where I could. If you want to take the easier and or lazier route of doing it, you could do a very general mask off about an inch off from where you're going to be dipping and just make sure to get a heavy coat of plastic dip on the area that you'll be peeling off to make it easier. I chose to use both 1 inch and 2 inch masking tape to give myself a good area to put the tape and drape onto. And as we zoom back into the head cam, you can see me focusing on getting the tape inside of the actual groove and pressing it behind the Tesla bar. If you really want to make sure it gets in there, you could use a nylon pry bar to press it into the groove. Myself personally, I always recommend taking the extra time to mask off as much as you can as it reduces your cleanup time as well as the amount of product you'll eventually need. You'll also notice though I definitely don't try to mask off the backup lights. It's an extremely small tight area and something like that is not worth the, the trouble of trying to mask off since it can just easily be peeled when everything is done. Now for the emblem, we're going to leave a bit of space around it, as it'll be much easier for us. So we'll mask off about an inch away from all the corners, and just peel the excess step off later once we're done with everything. So next up will be our tape and drape, which will also be sped up. While this is a completely optional step, it's one I highly recommend. It'll make the whole cleanup process exponentially easier and reduce the amount of overspray that you'll end up having. You get to see me have a dumb moment here with it, as I knew the roll I was using was almost empty and should have just started with a new one, but instead I insist on trying to use it. This created a headache as I went on as I had to tape the two sections together. Not a big deal, just took more time. It's easiest when working with tape and drape once it's opened up to mask off the corners so it doesn't blow around on you. 
Sometimes the static cling is enough to hold it there, but if you're outside like I am, you can pretty much guarantee the wind will pick it up. To make sure the tape and drape doesn't cover the emblem, you carefully cut out the section around it with your scissors, and then just put more masking tape over the tape and drape to seal it in. Alright, and we're finally on to the actual core content here, the, the plastic dipping. And if it wasn't uh, you know, 100 degrees out, I'd recommend letting the can sit in hot water for about five to 10 minutes first. It really helps thin out the plastic and gets better spray and better coverage with it. We'll start off, we're going to shake the can vigorously for about two minutes to make sure it's fully mixed. I had shaken it up off camera so that way we wouldn't sit here and watch me shaking a can for too long. And then for our first layer, we're going to spray a very light tack coat. It'll have about 15% coverage it's not going to look like there's very much on there at all. And then you just also want to make sure to get a little spray into the, uh, the corners as well. And with the second coat, we'll go a little slower. We're aiming for about 60 to 80% coverage. You'll notice a good bit of orange peel at this stage, and that's perfectly fine. Make sure to give a light spray into any of the corners or indentations to make sure the spray gets in at every angle. One thing with plastic dip is, in order to make sure it's peelable and comes off easily, you want at least five plus coats. In this scenario, I did a total of five coats, uh, though the last couple were notably thicker. I did go over them a couple of times, so it's about the equivalent of probably seven coats. And if you, you know, you hear a lot of things about plastic dip, about it not being great, it doesn't peel off easily, and the reason that's only the case is if they did not apply enough plastic dip. If you only apply you know, two or three coats or you just try to apply it on heavy initially, you're not going to have a good time when it comes time to peel it off. On the third coat here, we're going to focus on going slower and getting a wetter coat. This wet coat will start to get rid of the texture that we have from the other two coats. And you should be able to see the plastic tip actually wetting out. It'll look glossy in one solid piece instead of speckled and bumpy as we've had. I also chose not to speed up any of the footage of the actual spray so that way you guys can get an idea of what the actual speed should look like when it comes to doing plastic up on a, a piece such as this. fourth coat here will also be a slow wet coat. The key thing to take away is just the pace of spraying. If you go too fast you're going to get a lot of texture and it won't look good when you're done. It's gonna have that bumpy grainy finish. It won't look you know, nice matte solid one piece. Alright, and then we're just going to switch to head cam for the fifth and final coat for a thick and heavy coat. As soon as we finish spraying, we'll be pulling up the tape and drape and removing the masking tape. So you want to make sure that the edges of your tape line are nice and wet, so it lifts up without pulling up your dip. You're going to see that I apparently didn't wet the edges enough around the emblem and it began lifting the dip around it, which ended up being fine, but 
normally that could present an issue if you weren't wanting to peel that section yet. And a couple other key things to take away here is the spraying technique. So we want to make sure that when we're spraying we're about 6 to 12 inches away. I usually try to kind of go for a happy medium there. And you always want to make sure that the can stays at a 90 degree angle from whatever it is that you're spraying. You don't want to be spraying off to the side, you know, hitting 130 degrees away from where you were. That's going to create a lot of overspray. If you keep with the 90 degrees, just keeping it perpendicular to the panel, you're going to ensure that you have much less texture that comes through in the end. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and start removing the film. The main thing we're focusing on is just not hitting any of the surfaces that we just plastic dipped and make sure that the tape line itself never touches the paint because the, the wet edges of course will leave plastic dip smears everywhere. And we're just going to kind of toss everything down to the side for now, make sure to pick it up in a little bit, make sure our neighbor's cat who is visiting us doesn't play in it because it will. After we have the tape and drape off, we're just going to make sure to get the actual initial layer of tape that we put down. Now if you were dipping a whole car, this process here would kind of be the more important part to make sure you have someone that can help you get the, the tape off before it actually dries so that way you don't have lift off like what you just saw there on the emblem area. Because if that's a panel you wanted to keep plastic dipped, that would have been an issue. And that's my fault for not wetting out the edge enough. I definitely know better, I just, I guess, thought I had sprayed enough, but I didn't. You can see it's really hard to peel here because it's still extremely wet, but it still comes off pretty easily overall. But what we're going to do is we're going to wait about 45 minutes before we actually come back to peel out the backup lights and the rest of the remaining dip that's around the emblem here. So now we're going to remove the plastic dip that's on the reverse lights. You just simply pick at it or rub it with your fingernails until it tears or starts to pull away. And then you can peel it off. It should come off nice and easy as long as you have enough coats for it. You can see here I'm scratching with my fingernail just to get it started. And then once actually I'm able to get my fingers in there, which this is much easier when it's not a tight little area, it comes up pretty easily. Now you could use tools to help you out with this. I just chose to be a bit obstinate initially and wanted to get the first one with just my hands. When we move over to the driver's side, I actually uh, use a couple of tools to help me with that. Just a, a pair of tweezers. All right, so over to the driver's side. So I start off, I just pick at it with my fingernail just to get a hole in it. And if you do decide to use you know, any type of tool like what I did with the, the pair of tweezers here in a moment. Main thing is just make sure you don't actually scratch anything with it because, you know, any type of metal, especially on taillights or paint, is going to scratch very quickly. You'll notice here once I just quit being hard-headed and decide to actually use the, the tweezers, it goes a lot easier. you am be able to get under it and then it just peels off effortlessly. right out just keep pulling it tore on me so I just get that last little bit out 
and it's a nice clean solid line and then we're going to come over to the actual emblem here and just pull out the initial parts underneath the T and then of course use the tweezers here to get in between the uh, the top of the T and that little triangle that's in there of course it had to break on the the hardest part to get to so just try to get in there didn't really want to peel out all that well so I just went from the other side figuring hey that's probably gonna be a good bit easier ended up working out the the harder that you pull on those tiny little pieces tends to make them tear a lot easier so of course we want to avoid that if we can just going nice and slow all right so we're all done there now we've got you know the five six coats on there so that way it's nice and strong if we decide that we want to peel it we can do so easily and for the area here where we have a little bit of overspray or excess all you have to do is take a microfiber cloth and just rub it and it comes right off quick and easy Let's say for some reason you didn't like the dip, it didn't come out the way you wanted, you didn't like it, it's super easy to remove. So we're just going to start right over here at the corner, just work on getting an edge, and then it just peels right off. It's nice and easy, make sure to pull it out of any corners there. And you can see because we have a nice thick coat, it just comes off in one easy piece here. Uh, it tears around the, the letters of course. The whole reason I'm peeling it is that I wasn't happy with how it turned out per se. Like it looks nice, I like it, the black looks good, but I'd like to have the actual Tesla word there, you know, maybe be chrome or be a different color, and have the rest of it black. So I'm gonna probably remove the actual applique back here and redo it with the, the Tesla out of it. And if we do that I'll I'll make another short little video just showing it, you know, probably a five minute video for that. Just go back, clean up any place that it, it ripped out, which on these letters, because it filled in the little gaps in between it, you know, it, it, it bonded to them, so it came off for the most part. And then we're also going to remove the T as well, because I don't want just one black item here, so you just pick the corner a little bit, which is actually easier said than done. And then it's all going to come off nice and easy. And so just uh, for the proof that plastic dip completely harmless there's no no issues with it as long as you get a nice thick coat when it comes time to get rid of it if you want to change it up or don't like it anymore it comes off it takes just a couple of moments to peel off a good thick coat Guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. If you like the content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get updates as new videos come out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.